the Democratic Party establishment um, in Nevada was taken over by socialists. So they saw an opportunity and they pounced. And now the Democratic Party establishment is absolutely apoplectic. They have been for quite some time. And they're trying to uh, take back power from the socialists. And um, let's get an update to that situation. So this is a news clip from uh, the beginning of February, um, shared courtesy of Case Study QB. But let's watch. And then I've got an article from Common Dreams that I want to read. Nevada Assemblywoman Danielle Monroe Moreno says she plans to run for the chair of the state Democratic Party. Monroe Moreno called herself the un unity candidate. She's currently the speaker pro tempore in Car and Just FYI, whenever a Democratic politician calls themselves the unity candidate, um, that's code for I don't like progressives. Literally, every single unity candidate that we've seen has been extremely divisive. So I automatically see that and I am extra skeptical but, but either way let's let's listen in city the current state party chair is judith whitmer and she's a member of the democratic socialists of america the dsa that dsa takeover of the nevada democratic party caused democrats to create a separate group to run the 2022 campaigns whitmer has also announced her re-election bid officer elections right now are slated for march 4th up in carson city nevada they created their own organization outside of the Democratic Party institution that already existed because they were so butthurt that socialists uh, took over. Holy shit. Um, now, uh, this is from Norman Solomon of Common Dreams. Democratic establishment targets progressive party chair in Nevada. What's happening to Judith Whitmer and her allies in Nevada is a classic battle between top-down corporate money and bottom-up progressive activism. Exactly. And for a very long time, Nevada has essentially been controlled by Harry Reid, where everybody who wants to get involved in Democratic Party politics at any level, nationally, um, state, locally, they have to kiss his ring. Um, but he's dead now, so I don't know what happened in the aftermath of his passing, if that created a sort of power vacuum. But either way, Nevada Democrats are pissed that socialists took over the party, and um, they're, they're fighting tooth and nail to get it back. Uh, they also stole the money from the state party after they won illegally, too. Status quo did an interview with DSA members in Nevada months ago. That's interesting. I I'd be uh, interested to watch that if you can find me the link, Gamer G. Because, yeah, that is um, that is sabotage right there. And if this were the other way around, they would accuse the socialists of being divisive and helping Republicans. But when establishment corporate Democrats do it, everything is perfectly fine. Like, there's no divisive nature about what they're doing because they're doing it, right? Unity for... Uh, me, but not the essentially. But anyways, to understand the current fierce attacks on the progressive leadership of the Nevada Democratic Party, it's helpful to recall the panicked reaction from political elites three years ago when results came in from the state's contest for the presidential nomination. Under the headline, Moderates Hustle to Blunt Sanders' Momentum After Nevada Win, the Associated Press reported that Bernie Sanders commanding... Uh, his commanding Nevada caucus victory made him a top target for his Democratic rivals and a growing source of anxiety for establishment Democrats. And also what's so interesting about that is this is specifically um, when he won the Nevada caucus, specifically when the Democratic Party establishment in media were pushing this idea of using superdelegates to basically steal the nomination away from him genuinely insane and unhinged and in the event bernie sanders won we would have seen probably one of the most fucked up things in democratic party history like authoritarianism on the democratic party side uh, it would have been ugly because they would not have let him win and they would burn down the entire fucking party just to stop bernie sanders from being the nominee even if that meant trump would win so you know it would have been really interesting in an alternate reality to see what would have happened but um yeah, I would argue that all of these people who say you should fall in line and vote for Joe Biden and uh, shut the fuck up, stop complaining, um, we, we have to unify to defeat Trump, 
they would have been singing a very different tune had Bernie Sanders actually pulled it off and won the nomination. Such anxiety spiked for Nevada's establishment Democrats a year later in early March 2021, when a progressive slate headed by activist Judith Whitmer won every officer seat in the state party, stunning its entrenched leaders. As she explained at the time, what they just didn't expect is that we got better and better at organizing and out-organizing them at every turn. At the 11th hour, seeing the progressive writing on the wall, the sore losers-to-be had siphoned $450,000 out of the state party's treasury, transferring the loot to the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee safely under the control of corporate aligned operatives that is despicable but not shocking in the slightest uh, and when whitmer's victory became clear all the employees of the nevada democratic party greeted the newly elected chair by immediately quitting so yeah there was a mutiny and that hasn't ended okay gamergy has the uh the video here we're gonna put that on pause and come back to that because yeah i want to see that uh, progressives took over. Okay. So bloviating predictions of disaster quickly ensued, but uh, Nevada's Catherine Cortez Masto, widely seen as the nation's most vulnerable Democrat in the Senate, won re-election last November. So did each Democratic member of the U.S. House, and Democrats control both chambers of the state legislature. The only major loss was the governor's seat. Whitmer cites nearly 2 million direct voter contacts, increased rural turnout, and wins in deep red territories. So they tried to make it seem as if the socialists couldn't competently run the party, but they disproved that notion. And it's not about, like, running the party. It's just about being in control. Like, this is a game of uh, thrones in a way, right? This is about who has power. And the corporate Democrats, they want the power. And they would rather burn down the entire party than give it to socialists who would actually run it in an arguably more competent way. I mean, this is just one example, right? We don't have a very um, robust case study here, but still this proves that like the sky wasn't falling and the apocalypse didn't come because socialists took over. They still did good. If Catherine Cortez Masto can win with socialists in control, then all the hysteria like should have gone away. But this was never about that. This was never about, you know, whether or not socialists could run the party. It's that they didn't want them to run the party because corporatists wanted to run the party. Uh, anyway, with her two-year term as state party chair about to expire, Whitmer is running for re-election as part of a progressive slate. While old guard forces ousted by party delegates two years ago are on the attack under the banner of the ironically named Unity, Unity Slate. So, what did I say about that video we watched? Anyone who's running as a Unity candidate is uh, full of shit. And they're extremely divisive and not to be trusted. The Nevada Democratic Party Central Committee will vote on March 4th. The Unity Slate candidates work for corporations and Republican-backed lobbyists, Whitmer said, adding that if elected, the Unity Slate would work in an echo chamber to only serve the most funded politicians in our state and only support the status quo's agenda. Now, what I fear about this is that they now know the threat that socialists pose and if they are able to take back power, they are never going to let that happen again. They're going to take money from the most egregious corporations, Republicans. It doesn't matter. They are going to make sure they have enough money to flood the airwaves so every single voter who stood home gets up because you have to fear these socialists because we can't have socialists taking over the party. Like that's that's what you're going to see. So on one hand, it's it's nice to see socialists win. But that just means that the corporatists are going to fight 10 times harder the next time. But that doesn't mean that they shouldn't do it. The, the socialists should still try to take control of the party where it's possible. I mean, they kind of created a, a type of blueprint here in the state of Nevada. But the corporatists are fucking pissed. I mean, this. I, let me just emphasize one thing really quick here. This isn't a unique phenomenon here. This is representative of the Democratic Party nationally and state Democratic parties across the entire country. Need I remind you what happened to India Walton? She won the Democratic primary to be the mayor of Buffalo. And what happened? Well, the sore loser Democrat decided to launch a write-in campaign, and he ended up raising money from Republicans and corporations and ended up beating her after she beat him in a primary. Now, can you imagine any scenario where... The entirety of the Democratic Party establishment would not be screeching in unison if a socialist did that. 
it wouldn't happen, right? So this party, they are called the Democratic Party, but they're Democratic in name only because they are very, very authoritarian in the ways that they try to shut out any progressive or socialist voices. And that's a problem. That's why they're not as popular and powerful with young people as they could be, but they don't care. They would rather lose with corporate Democrats than win with progressives. That's always been the case. The Unity Slate's corporate ties are underscored by sponsors of its Sapphire Pack, which recently reported taking donations totaling $10,000 from Southwest Gas, as well as $5,000 from Nevada Energy. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty raisin. If you're taking money from fossil fuel companies or energy companies, that's just, um, yeah. Whitmer charged that acceptance of such funding from utility corporations screws over the same voters we're working hard to fight for as the so-called unity slate turns a blind eye to rising costs that impact our community's most vulnerable. Whitmer said on Monday that her opponents have the audacity and brazenness to run a registered lobbyist on their unity slate as the candidate for second vice chair of the state party. She added that the lobbies for an anti-union company fighting against our largest, hardest working union, referring to the culinary union, which days ago tweeted against his company, the lobbying law firm Brown's, Brownstein Hyatt Farber Shrek. One thing that I like about Whitner, Whitmer is she's not afraid to call the bluff of these corporate Democrats. Like, she is pretty blunt, and you have to be. Like, you can't get in that position that she's in without playing a game of chicken and calling out these dipshit corporate Democrats because they are disingenuous. Um, so, nationally, Whitmer has been a leader in efforts to reform the Democratic National Committee in early February. The DNC Resolutions Committee refused to act on a motion she co-authored to ban dark money in party primaries. Time and time again, we've watched dark money used to silence the voices of our party. Uh, most needs to hear, Whitmer said. When strong Democratic candidates willing to speak truth to power have messages that can be drowned out in a flood of untraceable expenditures, she pointed out, many candidates are questioning why they should even run. Yeah. One more paragraph before we go to the video by Status Quo. Three years ago, during the lead up to the hard fought Nevada caucuses for delegates in the presidential nomination race, the wide gap between powerful union officials and rank and file workers was thrown into sharp relief. The hierarchy of the powerful Las Vegas based Culinary Workers Union bashed Bernie Sanders for championing Medicare for All, but workers and their families overwhelmingly voted for Sanders. Now the state AFI, AFL CIL leadership is backing the unity slate against progressives. Yeah. So remember that? That was all also really fun. When the Democratic Party establishment tried to turn or tried to pit the culinary workers against Bernie Sanders and made it seem as if they didn't like him because of his Medicare for All proposal and they like the health insurance that they got that their union fought for. And if we had Medicare for All, then what's the point of having the union to fight for health insurance? I mean, for other benefits, better wages. But that backfired spectacularly because as the article points out, the rank and file are with Bernie Sanders. So I've made this observation before, but unions are good, right? But union leadership oftentimes isn't great at representing the rank and file. And that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, so thank you to Gamergy for sharing this video here. So Biden White House and DNC sabotaging elected progressive leadership of Nevada Dem Party. So this was from a year ago. So let me see here. Yeah, January 29th of 2022. So um, now the election is coming up. And they've never stopped. Like the corporate wing of the Democratic Party has never stopped trying to take back power from the socialists. Uh, let's watch this. The Nevada State Democratic Party, you won through Democratic oh, elections. Yeah, Whitmer here. Okay. Um, right away, it seems that the uh, old guard, which Harry Reid was basically the boss of the Nevada <laughs> everything. Uh, that a lot of them kind of took their ball and went home. They weren't happy that progressives took over. But the new development, the new developments now is even though you are the duly elected chairwoman of the state party, a progressive and other uh, whatever they want to call it, Bernie backed, DSA backed progressives have taken leadership. The Democratic National Committee federally instead of recognizing you and working with you to win elections, to fundraise, what have you, they're now working around you basically with, correct me if I'm wrong, a not affiliated super PAC. Can you tell me what's going on? Sure. 
So I think everyone has probably heard the history by now of how we won the election. It was a lot of organizing, but we won a fair election. Um, From the time that we won that election, there was a refusal by the old guard to actually work with us. So they met secretly with Washoe County Democratic Party and and then released a press release saying that they were going to host the coordinated campaign and all of the party, all of the um, elected officials campaigns out of Washoe County instead of working with the state party. Um, And so there's been this drive since then to circumvent a work around the entire state party structure, even though we've been doing the work, doing the job that we were elected to do, which is expand the Democratic Party, make sure that, you know, we're including everyone and everyone has, you know, their voices are heard, they're able to participate in the process. We do community outreach, community engagement, community service throughout the year not just paying lip service at election time. And we have openly stated that we support the reelection of all our Democratic candidates. They still do not want to work with us. We've tried over and over again to get them to the table, to get them to talk to us, to get them to respond to us. Um, And then through a lot of investigative work, we were able to uncover a lot of documentation that showed that this was in process prior to our election because their internal polling showed them that I was going to win the election they immediately made moves to start this process. So even though they're trying to claim that they can't trust us, they can't work with us, they didn't even give us a chance because as soon as they saw that I was going to win the election, they transferred $450,000 out of the the treasury um, to the DSCC. Then they transferred $18,000 out of the treasury to Washoe County Dems. And they gave away our entire state voter file, which is illegal for $0, you know, signed a contract with a PAC to give them our entire state voter file. And then they turned around and initiated a transfer of our state voter file to Washoe County. So all of these things were put into play before we even actually won office because they- And imagine how well they would have done if the old guard hadn't sabotaged them, right? Because um, as the article stated, the governor was the only one who, uh, who had lost. But they still was able to get Catherine Cortez Masto elected, other incumbent Democrats reelected. So if they hadn't been sabotaged, imagine how much more powerful they would have been. And the reason why they're so effective is because they actually do a thing called organizing, which the establishment Democrats, they don't want to do to the extent that they do it. It's it's rare. And it goes uh, like on a case to case basis, depending on the candidate itself, like AOC does that. But like overall with New York Democrats, for example, Sean Patrick Maloney did fuck all to help Democrats in New York and they performed worse than Democrats in other states when that state should have helped Democrats, you know, um, keep that majority that that they were fighting to keep in 2022. But let me uh, let her continue talking here because this is fascinating. Anticipating that we would win office. And then, you know, all the documentation we have proves that. And then from day one, they have made statements like we're going to destroy the state party. Um, the only way we'll work with the party is if they hand over the keys and hand over control. You know, things like statements like that, whereas we've said nothing along those lines. We've kept the upper hand, upper road and said, hey, you know, we can work together on this. I just I just want to boil this down so the audience gets it, because I'm not a lawyer, but some of this sure. uh, some of this sounds very fishy <laughs> and straddling the line legally. Number one. There was elections held. So if a Democratic Party has been talking about we got to fight for voting rights, uh, they have been uh, rightly so knocking down Trump's crazy, you know, uh, election fraud nonsense, which is not true. Mm -hmm. So they've been saying we're, you know, we're the party of democracy, free and fair elections, this and that. You other progressives won a fair election, uh, fair election. So you took over the leadership of the party. Yep. When you won. They literally basically cleaned out the cookie jar. Yeah. They took they took huge sums of money that the new leaders would need just to get off. You know, you just get elected. You obviously need a pot of money to, for, for everything that a, that a state party does. They basically I don't I don't know. if Yeah. I mean, I, I stole it. I, I don't know. I mean, that was yeah. the property of the Nevada. That was the property of the Nevada State Democratic Party, which progressives had just won an elect won an election to take over. Right. They stole the money. They stole the money. Then they basically create from what the sounds of it, they've created a shadow state party. Yes. Run by 
establishment old guard people. As it turns out, polling shows that the majority of Nevadans support progressive policies. So they're not representing Nevadans by doing this either. Um, they're yeah. really. So we'll stop it right there. I'll link you to the full video um, if I turn this into a segment. But yeah, rat fuckers is the best way to put it. They will rat fuck any socialist or liberal group that takes power. They want to shut them out of power. But if the socialists in turn shut them out of power in the same way and try to rat fuck elections in the same way that corporate Democrats do, you'd never hear the end of it. They'd be on CNN screeching about how there's no unity and they're just like Donald Trump. But it's it's perfectly fine if they do it to the left. It's sickening. And the Democratic Party is trash. Uh, and this is why leftists in every single state have got to get organized because if it can happen in Nevada, it can happen in other states too.